Howdy, lieutenants and economists. The most volatile, evil, disgusting things on the planet, humans. If you have a video request, you can always go to assholeconsulting.com. Yeah, I am gonna charge you, kids. And that is the importance of not fucking up. You are such an asshole! Morning, children. Had an interesting one here because um, I had to sit down and kind of think this one through a little bit because I haven't visited this in a long time. Um, I did attend many, 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 many years ago in the 90s a seminar at the Ludwig von Mises Institute down at Auburn University. Let's try and revisit that. Would you be so kind as to give a talk on your take of anarcho-capitalism, either David Friedman, Hans Hermann Hoppe, or other prominent ANCAPs? If not, this is a test email per your YouTube video request, um, which we solved, so the old email is up. Um, well, I won't delve necessarily into David Freeman or Hans Hermann Hoppe. Um, I did download some of their, their uh, seminars and listen to it um, and to refresh my memory. Like, where is it today? <laughs> what are the academics talking about it today? So let's go through a, <clears throat> a quick little review of what anarcho-capitalism is. And I took some notes here. And you know it's pretty serious when I take notes. Uh, so anarcho-capitalism. Anarcho-capitalism is, I don't know. I, I love it. And this is one of my main criticisms, is how academia convolutes the fuck out of economic systems. There is no such thing as anarcho-capitalism. There's just anarchy on its extreme form. <clears throat> this is very simple. Very simple. You want to complicate it, go ahead. Very simple. Anarchy is the complete absence of government. Right? There's no government, which would mean it's 100% capitalistic. All right? It's all private sector. On the other extreme is communism, where there is no private sector. It's all government. That's it. All right. I love who was the fraud you guys all think he's. He is intelligent, <clears throat> but he's a fraud. Um, he's a linguist. Oh, what is his name? Just another academic who never, his, he didn't even take the little tip of his small dick and stick it in the real world. Chomsky. Uh, these idiots are talking about how there's libertarian socialism. It's like, no, <laughs> no. Libertarians are maximum social freedom, maximum economic freedom. That's what defines them. There's no left libertarian. If you're a left libertarian, you're a Democrat, right? You want abortion, um, what other, other social rights, gay marriage, the right to own guns. Oh, wait some social rights uh and you but but you're against economic freedom <clears throat> you want to take 50 percent of everybody's money on the other side the republican side you're for economic freedom uh, more of a traditional conservative uh, type of thing uh but you're in theory against some social rights like you're against gay marriage you're against marijuana and you're against gun ownership oh wait <laughs> Just don't make it fucking more complicated than that and that's what academics do. They're like, I'm going to add a prefix, a prefix. Oh, my God, I'm adding a prefix. Oh, my God, I'm so smart. I came in. Anarchy, communism. That's the spectrum. Maximum economic freedom and ownership of your stuff. No economic freedom and no ownership of any stuff. Don't fuck it up. So the anarcho, this comes straight out of the 1990s where a bunch of trench coat wearing high schooler douchebags. Oh, I'm an anarchist. I'm a vegan. I'm a pacifist. It's like, no, you're a douchebag who's putting an ist in an ism and claiming a belief so you sound cool without actually having to hit the gym. Which is what all millennials do today. <laughs> so, it is either anarchy or communism and anything in between. Now, uh, there is, it, it, when I listen to Friedman and Hoppe, um, I don't think any of them were arguing necessarily for full-blown anarchy, to give them intellectual honesty and to be intellectually honest. I think what they were arguing was that uh, we they, they made a thought-provoking idea saying, the, the current convention is that the government, it's more efficient for the government to provide universal goods. And the definition of a universal, or sorry, public good, public good, is my consumption of that good does not prevent you from consuming it. So the military. Right now I am being protected by the military. Does my consumption of it prevent you from being 
protected from the military. No, we all benefit from the planes and the tanks and the soldiers and all that. <clears throat> Regulation. Um, does me eating some fish that has made, been made sure by the USDA to not have salmonella, not be past the expiration date, does that prevent you from being protected? No. But when we talk about specific items, private items, <clears throat> private goods, uh, this is my piece of fish. I'm going to eat this piece of fish. Does my consumption of that fish prevent you from consuming that fish? Yes, it does. Because so that's usually the rule they would use to say, all right, something that is a universal good the government should provide, something that is a private good um, the private sector should uh, provide for. And so things that make logical common sense, roads, judicial systems, police, military are largely logically determined that that should be provided by the government, libraries, things like that. <clears throat> what these guys and other anarcho-capitalists are recommending is that a lot of that stuff could be done away with. Like judicial systems uh, or a fair amount of it could be done away with where you have private contracts. Like we agree privately on this thing and if not then we're going to do X, Y, and Z. I didn't hear the consequences. You say, well, wouldn't it require government to enforce those laws? Yes, it would. You, that, but that would be the enforcement branch, not the judicial branch. And the cops would come in and say, is this the contract? They'd have to serve some kind of judicial role. They'd read through the contract. You know, I don't know if you ever watch Andy Griffith. Sometimes he'd be sheriff, then he'd be justice of the peace. He'd play both roles. <clears throat> but you don't need this huge judicial system. It, it can be largely outsourced to the private sector. And then less amounts are, are done, you know, key things are done by the government. They talk about cops where it's like, well, you know, and you, you see this, they're, they're not necessarily wrong. There's, there's evidence of this happening in the real world where a lot of you don't like HOAs. That's fine. You don't like HOAs, but uh, a lot of gated communities in HOAs, and I've seen this in Vegas where the HOA, you know, I don't want to pay the HOA. Well, the HOA all of a sudden is doing garbage and water. Well, that used to be the government. Now it's a private entity. So there's proof right there. It can be outsourced to the to the private sector. The government does have to be in the in the realm of getting you your water, or you could. <clears throat> it is private property, and so you know, I've worked security. You're quote unquote policing the private property. You're still under the domain of all state, federal, and local laws, but you can essentially have your own uh, private police force on your private property. People combine together in a neighborhood. This is the <clears throat> Weeping Willows neighborhood, you know, they named those developments and kind of, I can't say it, gaha, gaha thing that people are like, oh, how freaking gaha. And so there is an argument that, yes, at least part of these things could be outsourced to the private sector and they may in fact do a better job. Um... But not once did I ever hear them say, eliminate the government, which I could be wrong. Maybe I just didn't listen to enough of them. So what I think they're arguing for is minarchist. They're a minarchist capitalist, where you have the absolute least amount of government possible, and you put everything out to the private sector, which I am for. I would say that I'm a libertarian minarchist, I guess would be the best way to put it. And we had that. We had that previous to Woodrow Wilson. We had that. The government didn't take more than 3% GDP. Sheriff would come in, run out the bandits. You've seen the movies, you know how it goes. And that's 100% historically accurate. Um, <clears throat> but it, it's happened before in U.S. history uh, where the government take was less than 1 20th. It was less than 5%, uh, which I would argue is about as minarchist as you can get and what the country was founded upon. It's like, no, we're free. It's the people. Now we're at 40% because you guys just couldn't suck enough great society dick. Um, I don't know how you decide, like, well, I got to suck Lyndon B. Johnson's dick and then Obama's dick and then Clinton's. Well, what, so many dicks to suck. I mean, it's hard being a Democrat. Um, regardless, I think that's what they're probably arguing for. And I think we would probably agree, again, I don't want to put words in their mouth, um, that there are just some hard limits, not necessarily internal to any one individual company, but due to external threats of other countries that effectively live in a world that makes this very theoretical, or we have to actually have some government for some key things. And these are uh, like hard monopolies. I wrote some things down here to, to give you an example. <clears throat> but for example, the military. 
you get some, I've heard them argue this before, you get some dipshits who are like, you know, hardcore anarcho-capitalists. We don't need them. And a lot of that comes from the hippie, dippy, pot smoking libertarians. Like, yeah, man, like, we just need peace. And if we hug everybody, Maduro and the Chinese won't evade, man. Uh, and they're also jerking off along with the academics because they put a prefix in front of capitalism. They're like, they're pacifists. <clears throat> and the problem is like, yeah, well, the rest of the world ain't pacifist. If you have a truly anarcho-capitalist, like, it, there is no government, it is going to be very easy for not even a big army that is not anarcho-capitalist, that does have a, a you know, a 20% take of GDP, uh, half of that is spent on the military, they could come in and take you out. Because there's no central uh, uh, military to stop them. Uh, you, you, what, what you have with true anarchy is countries on the individual cellular level. And that's fine for freedom until five cells decide, and you, you could get warlord, you get a tribalism. It, it, it may not even be the Chinese come and take over with a very large army. It could just be, I go form an alliance with Bob, Steve, Frank, and Joe. We all grab our guns, and we slowly take over, and we grab your women and your children. Like, oh, would you like your women and children back? Well, you better go conquer that next territory, and then you can have your women and children back. Or you can have one child back, but then you go down and you can have another child back. And we're just going to keep eyes on you. Matter of fact, we might just keep one of your children and allow you to visit. <clears throat> I mean, that's where tyrants and warlords come in. And so only dopey rich white kids from the suburbs wearing trench coats who like to put prefixes in front of isms come up with the idea, Hey man, like we don't need military, man. Yes, we do, because there's other people that will have a standing army. They will have a standing army, and they can easily take over. Or Aaron Clary just had a bad day and said, fuck it, we're taking over all of Minnesota. Right? <clears throat> and everyone else is smoking pot and singing kumbaya. I'm like, different plan, motherfuckers! Duck, 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 duck. Now dig! I, Negan, perfect example. Negan's gonna come in. You get your anarch. You want anarcho capitalism? Oh boy, Negan. Negan's on his way. He heard about your little, your little commune there, your little touchy feely world there. But we man, we all share and exchange. <coughs> Let me put it this way: Who do you think would win, Negan and and twelve of his men, or everybody at Burning Man? You tell me who you think's going to win. That's a nice effigy you got there. <laughs> I'd like it. And so that's that's probably my main concern about pure anarcho-capitalism is uh, you don't think about other countries who are not anarcho-capitalists. They just have a an organized standing army. But we could get together in it. No, no, no. You libertarians haven't been able to get anything together. That's another criticism of anarcho-capitalism is largely in the realm of libertarian politics. You guys can't run a party. You're not going to run a military. All right? <clears throat> and I'll kind of get into this a little bit about what naturally happens in the real world in natural economics, if that's a study. Uh, another thing um, that is not necessary, but I still think the government would, would be required to do, is regulation. Um, because as much as you like to think the government bad, private sector good, no, the private sector is not good. It's the same group of douchebags you're pulling from. Now, lazier, weaker, less intelligent people tend to gravitate towards government. <clears throat> but there's, do we, do we have to talk about 2007, 2008 again? Did you not see the banks? Did you not see what happens if they're unfair? And they were even partially regulated, and they still went around the law. They still fucked shit up. Um, corporations... Yes, there's the free market, yes, and competition, yes. But they'll still dump shit if it saves them a nickel. They'll, they'll still get slave labor. Um, <clears throat> this is more of a my misanthropic philosophy that everyone's a scumbag. Everyone's a douche. Not to, oh, it's not private sector good, public sector bad. Everyone's a dickhead. And you got to watch out for yourself. And I think there's a, there's a, a bit of good, a lot, not a bit of good, a lot of good, that can only come from, hey, we got some regulations here. You know, speed limits. Well, I, 
Again, the jerking off trench coat wearing high schooler who is not only a pacifist and a vegan but likes to put prefixes in front of isms. Well, we can go whatever speed we want. We don't need lights or, or signs and we just come to an agreement and if people die, will they die? And it is. I like stoplights. I like having laws and rules of the road. I like, I like that. Oh, sure, a small little town, you don't need it. Somebody put up a stop sign on the local town. Could be, okay, fine. <clears throat> when it comes to interstates, yes, I kind of want uh, uh, government having some form of regulation. Probably not as much as we have today, but I like if we're going to act as a large nation, you're going to need, you know, with, with subdivided subgovernments, state, local, county, it's kind of good if we all, uh, be it a confederation or a federation, or these United States of America, we all have some universal federal national rules we operate by. And this leads to another kind of regulation aspect I like, and that is the conduct of commerce. Um, where you have different sub-governments, uh, different le levels of government, state, federal, local, but we all decide to operate in a confederation or some kind of team. <clears throat> Thebes will help Sparta, Sparta will help Athens, that kind of thing, look up Greek history. Uh, well, okay, we could also benefit one another if we all operate on some same laws, like, okay, our railroad tracks are this far apart. <clears throat> One in, in Kentucky, they're that far apart. In Texas, they're this far apart. Well, boy, isn't that going to, you know, you need some standards. If anything, standardization in terms of coming from regulation would be very key. Um, in Europe, I mean, before the EU, that's ostensibly what the EU was for. Now, oh, I'm going from this little pissant country to this little pissant country. I got to change my drachma for lira. And now I'm going to here. Now I need to get marks. Oh, well, now I'm here. I got to get it francs. That's a pain in the ass. That slows down business. That slows down purchasing. So if you have a, a, some level, you know, all of them agree there's a council. <clears throat> it doesn't need to be as numerous as the European Parliament. And yes, I know once you form this little government, you get the EU Parliament in Brussels, which is just a money-grabbing, tyrannical entity. You don't need that. You just need a council of the commerce prime minister, the commerce ministers all meeting together. Do we agree on this? Yes. Okay. Here's our currency. Da, da. <clears throat> um, but having that kind of cooperation among various uh, sovereign entities, um, I think there's a need for government there. Um, so again, this falls more along the lines of minarchism, which has been proven to work before with the history of the United States. The EU, if it wasn't founded by a bunch of socialist kwatahas, I mean, go look at the EU parliament and look at the people who are the EU parliamentary members. None of them have worked. None of them. You see, you see the EU parliament for what it is. It, they hide, they all left us always hide behind what they say, what their stated goal is, the children, poverty. And then you look, it's like, no, you're just a bunch of lazy people who majored in dumb shit and don't want to work. That's what, it, and that's why corruption happens. And so I'm glad I solved corruption for all of you guys. <clears throat> will the cleric test ever make it like into history? Well, I wonder. Will people say, "Hey, this guy had it with a simple four-question test. Give him money before he dies. Yay, save the world." Um, so yeah, I I uh, not only believe in minarchism. We have proof it worked at one time. I don't, but if you go to anarcho-capitalism. <clears throat> then you get into the world of academics. And this is one of my main complaints about this, is if you look at you know, Hans Hermann Hoppe, David Friedman, anyone, not to pick on those two guys, and it could be on the left, but if your job, we can look them up, I think Hans Hermann Hoppe, they never set foot outside the real, uh, into the real world. They're always academics. I mean, I might as well have a conversation with this coffee cup before I talk to fucking Chomsky. This is going to be more real and interesting. And, and it's like, yeah, that's cute. You got your nice little theories. That's really cute. I don't care to hear it. I really don't care to hear it. I, I just, you sit there and you think tanks and you think and you, you theorize and you opine. And you're not even necessarily wrong, but have you guys laid sod? Have you guys uh, <clears throat> bust dishes? Or are you from an effete elite class where it's this amazing world where you get to actually opine and theorize, well, maybe anarcho-capitalism is correct. It's like the guy 
you know, ancient aliens. Well, it's possible ancient or, or Bigfoot. Why don't you go chase after Bigfoot? Why don't you do a show on ancient aliens? Go join, <laughs> go sit on Joe Rogan. Uh, show and talk conspiracy theory. Question whether the moon landing happened. It's all great mental masturbation, isn't it? Uh, but for those of us that are a little bit more practical and concrete, and I want to apply economics a little bit more, um, <clears throat> anarcho-capitalism is just not possible. And, and the final point I'd make about it is look throughout history. There are certain things that happen all over the world before we even knew about each other, before 1942 or 1492, Columbus blew and all that other stuff, things have happened naturally across all countries, all peoples throughout all of time. Gold, for example, precious metals. Why did gold have value? Because it fit the traits and characteristics of money. The Incans had gold. Wow, what are the chances? It, it must be coincidence. Well, wait, they also had marriage. Maybe they, they had murder. They had sacrifice. Uh, but, you know, huh. Boys and girls got together and formed families. There was a nuclear family. Sometimes there were harems, but there was a nuclear family. You'd have a wife and a husband. And there were ceremonies. Huh? That was happening in India before we discovered the Indians. And in China, before we all met the Chinese. It's happening in, in the Celts before the Romans got there. That's very interesting. You know, that must be coincidence, too. <clears throat> and then religion. Oh, my God. Everyone came up with religion. And they all came up with kind of the same Ten Commandments. And then there was also books written for those that wrote books. Like, hey, you shouldn't eat hooved animals. I wonder why that was. It has nothing to do with that way you not get poisoned. And there was right ways to butcher and store food. Kosher. That, that just No, that's a Jew thing. That is just the Jews coming up with their wild, crazy Jewish stuff. Or was it trial and error, and if you did that, you'd survive longer? And maybe religion was just born out of wisdom, and that we also needed a form of government, but we needed a oogie boogity guy in the sky. If you didn't do this, oh my god, your penis would fall off, and you go to the penis demon, and he'd kill you forever and ever. No, I don't want to go to the penis demon. Oh, Jesus Christ, no. Who's Jesus Christ? Don't know. I haven't invented him. But in Babylon, we got a, we got a guy like that. We do. Yes. So there are things that happen naturally. They form naturally throughout human civilization, uh, throughout human history. And do you want to question it? There's always been a government. Always. It starts off with warlords. We'll protect you from the other warlords. Give us half your shit, Nikon. Right? Then, that, then oh, how do we get people? Oh, we got religion. Oh, we got the agriculture. Now we got to protect it. Well, we need to get a group of people together to protect it from the other one. We need a big time. Hey, uh, to rally you all under a flag, do as this guy in the sky. A guy talked to me on the mountain from, from a flame. Hey, he came down and said, you will worship me. And do as I say and hear my commandments. Oh, okay. And then even though it was on false pretenses, hey, people are following these rules and laws and the economy and production exponentially increases. Now you're wealthy. Uh, government is needed. It is needed. Because people are dumb, they're lazy, and they'll stab you in the back. 80% uh, of the people will do it. 80%, <clears throat> I won't lie to you, if, if murder was legal, you wouldn't see me around. I'd be at like, hunting season, boys and girls. Let's go giggity. I mean, it, that, there's, it, don't lie, don't act like you're all moral. Oh, I would never kill bullshit. You go drive on the highways, you'd be ramming people off the road if it was legal. There's one last motherfucker. <laughs> and so you can, you can sit there. Oh, yes. See? Yes. Hmm. Yes. anarcho cal Oh, but communism. Oh, it may be theory. We just haven't done it yet. Wow. Oh, wow. It's like, no, no, no. No, motherfuckers. Look at history. Look at what happened. You can argue against that, or you just say, hey, you know what? We need government. It's going to form. We need religion. It's going to form. Marriage is going to happen. Children are going to happen. And so I... Again, I'd love to get minarchism. Absolutely. Because we've had it. And I'd like to have a 3% tax rate. Um, but anarcho-capitalism? No. Because then we'll just take your shit off. The minarchists will take over from the anarcho-capitalists. What's this like? Hey, nice shit. Notice you ain't got nobody protecting it. Me and my five other buddies, I'm going to take it. All right, that's it. Questions, answers, links down below. Get my books. Uh, also, remember, we got the old email system back up over at assholeconsulting.com. So if you have questions, you can shoot me an email there. Double check. We're still testing it. So check your spam mail.
when I email uh, back to make sure it doesn't end up in spam. We'll see you guys later. Toodles.